All right, so here we go. Again, all this is, is it's a list of objects that we want saved in our store. So just a list of users. If you want to make another one called Reducer Movies, then you can have a list of movies in there. If you want to have another one called Reducer Music, then you could have a list of your favorite songs in there, whatever. So a reducer is basically just a piece of data that you want saved in your store. Now, one other thing I want to mention before we actually toss this into the store is this. Remember I said that your store is one big JavaScript object one big JavaScript object. So if we have a list of users and we have a list of movies and we have a list of our favorite songs, that's three objects. Now the store, we can only pass in one object. So before we take all these reducers and just toss them in our store, we actually need to combine them into one big object first. So in your reducers directory right here, go ahead and make a new JavaScript file and just name it index. Now this is a file that I always have no matter what type of data I'm using in my application. And what you can do is you can actually call a function called combine reducers and this is a built in function. And what this does is it's a function that allows you to pretty much take all of your reducers and combine them into one object. That's it. So how do you use this? Import combine reducers from Redux. Now, from here, you just need to import this file. So whenever we import this file, by default, it imports this function. In other words, our list of users. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say import user reducer from and it's in the same directory. So I'll just write dot forward slash reducer users. Now, since this is the default import, you're pretty much importing this and storing it in a variable called user reducer. All right. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make a constant called all reducers. And this is going to be the main object that's going to be thrown inside our store. So again, anytime you make another reducer, just remember to add it to all reducers. And again, this is just equal to the combine reducers function. And all this function does is it takes each of these reducers as an object. Now, here is the thing. Whatever you name your object, that's how you're going to refer to it in your application. So I'm going to say users and set this equal to user reducer. So now all throughout my entire application and all my components and all my containers, I'm going to have a piece of data named users. Now this object is equal to this bit of data right here. I can actually change the name of this to anything I want, but since it's equal to users, I thought it was kind of appropriate. And then again, you can make another function called reducer movies or whatever you want to name it. And then you can have something like movies equals movies reducer. And then you have more data available throughout your entire application. But there you go. So this is how you can take all your reducers, all your different bits or chunks of data and combine them into one big object. So now with this object, we just need to go ahead and throw it in our create store and it creates a Redux storage from all of your objects. Pretty cool, huh? And of course we need to import this. So import all reducers, too lazy to type that. So I'm just gonna copy from reducers. And since it's the index, then I'll grab that by default. So there we go. So again, just to recap one last time, right here, we created our main store our main application storage, which is the huge um, JavaScript object that's responsible for storing all of our applications data. Now, right now, we just made a small piece of data to stick in there. And this is just a list of users. But whenever we make another one, we have to pretty much throw them inside this function, combine reducers. And that takes all of your little uh, bits of data and combines it into one big JavaScript object that we can throw in to create our main 
store for our entire application. So there we go. And in the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to take this store and pass it to your components. So that's what we have to look forward to. I will see you guys next time.